official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Back in the 1880s, a southern outlaw by the name of Rube Burroughs made an underworld reputation as the first robber to hold up a railroad train single-handed. From then on, known as the Alabama Wolf, Rube and his gang robbed and killed from Florida to Oklahoma. Folks are back there. Oh. Do I ride in here with him? No, no, no. I'm sorry. It's against regulations. You'll have to ride in a regular coach. Yeah. Well, I guess nothing bad can happen to poor brother anymore. to take on water. Evening, cousin. Looks like we're right on time. dollar robbery of the westbound express from Memphis to Little Rock happened at Round Pond, Arkansas, September the 10th, 1890. The young lady is Margaret Jones. I'm Matt Clark. We both work for the Southwest Railroad as detectives. We began the investigation of the Round Pond robbery by catching the same train on their return run to Memphis. There's one robber that I never want to see again as long as I live. The fellow was about six feet tall. He wore a black hat, striped shirt, Talk to the draw like a fellow would if he come from uh, Alabama or Tennessee or some of them states. Alabama, huh? Yeah. As soon as we had checked in with the Memphis police, we called on the undertaker whose description of the train robber differed widely from that of the express messenger. However, under questioning, the undertaker broke down and confessed that he had taken $100 from the robbers for the use of his hearse and coffin. 
Hi, Chief. Morning, Matt. Any luck? Well, I don't know. Once the undertaker started talking, he couldn't stop. That coffin trick and the way the description adds up, it could be the Rube Burroughs gang. Of course. The Alabama Wolf. He's pulled that stunt before. I understand he's been pretty active in this neck of the woods. Yeah, a lot too active. Be a feather in our caps if we nailed him. Uh, How'd your men make out at Round Pond? Well, they searched the spot where the robbers left the train, tracked him to the main road. From then on, nothing. You mind if I recheck that area? Go ahead. In the meantime, I'll have my men search the country for Rube and his gang. Why, we'll pick up anybody who even knows his name. You got a file on Rube Burroughs? In the back. Jonesy, you chase back there and see what you can find out. Oh, Matt, you know how I hate paperwork. Yeah, I know, but there's no sense you tramping around the rocks and the mud. Besides, keep you out of mischief. Come on now, run along. You don't need a partner, Mr. Clark. What you need is a secretary. <laughs> I'll see you later, Chief. Okay, Matt. The local sheriff and his posse joined me in the search near the Round Pond area and found nothing. We were just about to call things off when we got a hot lead that a man answering the description of Rube Burroughs was riding with a wagon train that was leaving the area. We overtook the wagon train and fired a shot to bring him to attention. The leader of the train mistook us for bandits and a running gun fight took place. Rube Burroughs made his escape. Only General Grant. He's been a pet of mine for quite a while. General Grant, don't you know it isn't nice to go around frightening lady detectives? Well, I better put you in here. You stay right in there. All right, Miss Jones, you may come down now. Well, thank heavens. I uh, finished with your file on Rue Burroughs. Did you find out anything? No, not very much. Miss Jones, I just received a wire from the constable at Sullivan, Lamar County, Alabama. Rue Burroughs' hometown? That's right. Listen to this. Have arrested Emma Hutchins. Am holding her on vagrancy charge. If interested, please advise. You know who Emma Hutchins is. Well, I haven't been covering your files for nothing. That's Rue Burroughs' girlfriend. Wire that constable right back and tell him to hold on to her, but don't tell him who's coming. Have you got that, Chief? Yes, but, uh, but what's the rush? I want to get there before Matt crashes in like the big man with the star and spoils everything. You can tell him that's what he gets for putting me on that paper rock pile. See you later, Chief. Oh, Conductor. Ma'am? How far are we from Sullivan, please? It's the next stop. We'll be there in ten minutes. Thank you. Pleasure. Pocket you. 
Caught you right in the act, didn't I? So you did, you cheapskate. What are you going to do about it? Well, of all the... What am I... I... I'll show you what I'm going to do. Conductor! Conductor! What's going on here? Look at her, Conductor. She picked my pocket. She did? Oh, what's this big fat slob need with a watch anyway? He's been asleep ever since we left Memphis. You hear that? Well, do something. Don't just stand there. Quiet down. Better come with me, young lady. Yeah, what for? I'm putting you off the train of Sullivan, and I'm turning over the constable. And when the railroad brings action, I'll appear against you myself. I'll teach pickpockers not to ride my train. <laughs> All right, miss. Oh, take your hands off of me, you crummy bloodhound. What do you think you're shoving anyway? Just keep the noise down, sister. I'll have to tie your head in a sack. Hey, you want to smoke, dearie? First time in? Any of your business. <laughs> Just making small talk, that's all. Gets a little lonesome when you're in here all by yourself. Oh, come on, honey. Why don't you tell Annie I'm all about it? It's good for the soul. What you in for? Well, I was on the train going to Birmingham. I got a kid to feed when I get there, so I... Swiped this fat man's watch. They grabbed me and throwed me off the train in this burg and booked me for a pickpocket. Uh, I'd done that once. But that's nickels and dimes, kid. You could do better. How? Tie yourself in with a smart man. <sighs> that's what you done. How come you're in a place like this? Well, my man's kind of famous. They figure I might know something about this round pawn train robbery. Wow. I've been reading about that in the papers. Did you guy have something to do with that? Hey, let's just keep that to ourselves, huh? Yeah, you've been dreaming. If you did have a fella like Rube Burroughs, you'd find yourself a better hotel than this one. By this time tomorrow, I'll be on my way to Memphis. Rube knows I'm here. I took care of that. You're lucky. You said it, kid. Can't you just picture us, me and Rube, floating down the old Mississippi in one of them river palaces, all glistening with hundreds of lamps, spending gold like a real southern belle. Yeah. Oh, that would be wonderful. Why don't you let her go, too? Anything you say, honey. Sam's waiting outside. Come on.
No sign of the others. You sure you told them to be here, Emma? Sure. Why don't you go up on that ridge and see if there's any sight of them? You know, Rube, I'd just as soon they didn't show up. A three-way split will go a lot farther than six. Think <laughs> it over. Hey, you know some, Emma? Sam's got a good idea. I'm giving those boys just ten more minutes, then we're leaving. Forget it, Rube. They won't be here. No? I've been way ahead of Sam. You divide 30,000 six ways, and in just one week, you and me are planning another job. Mm-mm. You got the brawn, and I got the brains. We're taking all that 30,000. Sam ain't gonna like that change of plans. If you shoot first, he's not gonna have time to figure out whether he likes it or not. <laughs> That's a little trick, Emma. What, do you want to be a backward bushwhacker all your life? Or do you want to go places with me? I can't even breathe without you, honey. And you know it. Yeah, I know it, you big ape. Well, you could make Jesse James look like a piker. With 30,000, we could move into New Orleans and show those boys how it's really done. You know, Emma, the way you say it, you make it sound like we could. Let's get the money and be ready to move. past and future. I never let you down yet. Now go do what you have to. No sign of them. Him and me have a change of plan, Sam. We figured we gave the boys time enough to get here. You know, I've been thinking the same thing all along, Rube. Didn't exactly know how to bring it up. Knowing how fair and square you've always been with us, boys. Rube. No. No, you wouldn't do that to me, Rube. Emma, talk to him. Don't let him do it, Emma. Look, Rube. We're friends. Rube. No. Come on, darling. You can't go around being a little boy all your life. Now, come on. Let's get out of here. Sorry, Mr. Clark. She did tell me she was a detective, but I found it kind of hard to believe. You can see how it was. Well, I certainly can, Constable, and I can't say that I blame you a bit. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Constable. I don't get a chance like this very often. Give me a few seconds to kind of enjoy it, will you? <laughs> and while you're wasting time enjoying it, funny man, Rube Burroughs is getting further away. Well, that's different. Why didn't you say so? Well, why didn't you let me? Rube was in here last night breaking out his girl. Ask him. Well, I'm not proud of it. Well, get to the meat, Jonesy. You went to enough trouble. Did it pay off or didn't it? According to my dear friend Emma, they're heading for Memphis to catch the riverboat for New Orleans. Well, that's enough. Come on. Well, I'll get my hat. Never mind, never mind. We've got just enough time to catch the westbound for Memphis. Well, thank you. That was come the on, best bread and water I ever had. See you later. 
After Jonesy and I had reached Memphis, we hired horses and rode out of town where we could watch anyone coming in from the southeast. We knew Rube wouldn't ride the train, so if he came in at all, it would have to be by this road. It's hard to tell who's in that buggy. Yeah. Just in case it's him, we better dismount. You stay behind your horse, you might recognize you. It'd be kind of hard to explain how you got down here so fast. Just keep going. No, that might look bad. We better stop. Oh. Howdy, mister. Howdy. What seems to be the trouble? A horse is throwing a shoe. How far would it be to the next town? Oh, about three or four miles. You're better off going back to Memphis, though. Thanks, maybe I will. Here up. That's who Burroughs and Emma. We'll trail them into town. You might lead us that stolen money. Did you see that girl, Rube? Seems I ought to know her. I thought he said that horse threw a shoe. Don't look like it to me. Rube, that girl's the same thing who's in jail with me. What's she doing way down here? I don't know. Maybe she's a detective. They planted in with you. You didn't do any talking, did you? No, of course not. There's no use taking any chances. We've got the money with us. Girlfriend died on October the 8th, 1890. Nearly all of the $30,000 from the Round Pond robbery was found in a carpet bag near the buggy. Local police found the body of Rube's partner, Sam Harlow, two days later. With the death of the leaders, the robber gang broke up and scattered. Sir, are you claiming the body? A relative of yours? Yes, a, a very close one. His father. Oh, I'm sorry. Even the most hardened criminal has someone who loves him. So Rube Burroughs' mortal remains were duly and legally delivered back to his parents honest, law-abiding citizen farmers of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> 